Man, I just got here to the spot. The Boca Raton Inlet, one of my favorite spots ever down here in Florida, as you guys know. I see a bunch of little tiny Sergeant Major, the Abu Defduf Saxatilis, is swimming around here, which is really uh, not that encouraging. <laughs> All right, let's get this video started. Hey, what's up, YouTube? Liu Shang here host of the Extreme Fully Fishing Channel. All right, before we get this video for today started, new species alert! Ladies and gentlemen, I've been fishing the Deerfield Pier at nighttime recently, and just last night, I actually landed a new species, 305. I wasn't really shooting a video, you know, because it was nighttime. I landed my first ever flag fin Mohara, the Eosinostomus melanopterus. And let me tell you all, I also landed my second ever snakefish last night, the Trachinocephalus meops, right? Which was actually a nice addition as well. Look, folks, if you want to keep in touch with everything that I do day to day, right? I highly recommend you all to crowdfund EPF on the $2 level on Patreon or maybe get yourself a YouTube monthly membership because I actually do post everything that I catch when I go out there fishing on my private Snapchat, okay? Which is available to the inner circle as part of the perks, right? That being said, like I mentioned, we are here at the Boca Raton Inlet. Now let me tell you, every time I come to this particular fishing spot, something interesting tends to happen. I've caught so many new lifers to my list over here over the years, right? If you guys been watching the channel here for a while, you guys know that countless. Okay, maybe not countless, but a lot of different species. So, so far in this Florida trip, I believe that I've caught about 33 different species of fish, believe it or not, right? That means that since I started shooting the series, I've caught 33 different types of species of fish. And today's main goal is to add a few more to that list, okay? As a side objective, I would really, really love to add a new species to the life list over here today. We got a lot of work to do, so enough talking and let's get the fishing started. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to begin the quest for the exotics today. Woo, I'm ready to probe for some parrot fish right here and now. If you guys want to know about the technique of what I'm doing, whatever, refer to the last video on the YouTube channel where I actually explain the whole process of what I'm going to be doing here, right? For now, I'm using a Mustad, I'm sorry, a Gamakatsu size 4 hook with just a whole piece of squid head and hopefully there are some juicy, colorful, exotic parrot fish waiting to whack that squid down there. It's alright man, all we need is the Sar Sergeant Major to start doing their job and the parrot fish soon is going to swim over. what we got here oh my goodness gracious dude i thought it was wow i thought it was <laughs> i thought it was some type of puffer it just turns out to be a very big i don't know if this is a sergeant major or a night sergeant we will have to double check we'll have to double check why did i tell you all huh what did your boy leo shane here just told you huh every time i come to this particular fishing spot something exceptional happens now let me show you all the magic over here okay this that you guys are about to see is no sergeant major this is not the abu def duf saxatilis okay this is actually the night sergeant the abu def duf taurus and the best part of this whole catch, which by the way was my first catch of the day, is that I've caught this species only one time before previously, and I did not have a good photo of that species. So this is actually great 
because now I have a great shot of this species per se, right? Now, here is how you identify for those who are interested. This is how you identify between them, okay? In the sergeant major, you have the dark bars, right? That are, are actually narrower than the intermediate spaces. Whereas, on the night sergeant, you have the dark bars that are actually wider than the intermediate spaces, right? So this is very, very important when it comes to life listing. Every time you come out here and you want to add new species to your life list, well, you need to learn how to properly identify your species of fish, right? So now, let's go release this fella. He has been inside the live well this whole time, so he should be okay. Let me see if I can walk on top of the coral reefs over here. This is dangerous maneuver, okay, kids? Definitely don't do this when you are out here, okay? EPF is a trained professional when it comes to this kind of stuff, all right? Don't go walking on the coral reefs and hurt yourself wow it went right down there right and hurt yourself on the coral reefs okay that is not worth it well that's a bummer while i was shooting the night sergeant the parrotfish kind of passed by you see these parrotfish over here fellas they swim left and right according to the tide right all the colorful ones kind of left here. I don't know. I don't see them anymore. I'm going to keep casting the squid head for a little bit more. See if any of the colorful ones showed up. But if they don't, I may change to a dropper loop rig and start casting out there to see if the exotics maybe are a little bit more outwards. Let's see, I see a few types of fish right over there. Oh my goodness, what is that? Oh yes, that's when you know it is about time for you to change to the dropper loop rig. We got ourselves here a little hairy blaney, man. The Labrisomus nuchipinis. Hmm, actually, I correct myself. What we got over here is not really a hairy blaney. What we got right here is a masquerader hairy blaney, okay? A female sample, right? The Labrisomus conditus. And you actually know this because if you look at the opercular flap of this particular fish, you will see that it is not fully oscillated with a white ring, right? The hairy blenny, the nuchipinis, has like a whole white around it. I know, right? It's like playing ichthyology over here, but it's like, you know, Florida species are all very hard to identify from time to time. Anyways, the blenny is a species of fish that lives among the rocks. And when they bite on your stuff, man, you just know that your squid or your shrimp sunk too far down, right? And what that means is that the parrotfish are definitely not around. Then the sergeant major are not that voracious either, okay? It is during times like this, man, when your thing sinks all the way down without you getting a heavy bite that you know that it is time to change to the dropper loop and maybe try a little bit more outwards i mean kind of makes sense because if you realize right the tide was running really fast at the beginning of this video right now we're hitting is lack tide look at that the tide is totally is still right so it absolutely makes sense that this reef species they are actually more outwards right now it's swimming freely instead of around the border here right trying to get away from the current Remember this, fellow ladies and gentlemen, for what I am about to tell you is very, very important. For a multi-species angler slash life lister, there is no such thing as a bad tide down in Florida. Slack tide, high to low, low to high. It doesn't matter. All tides are good for multi-species. The advantages of having the limited time here for the slack tide 
is that you can hit the structure in deeper waters without getting snagged because you don't have the current dragging your line and your rig right into the rocks, right? So you can actually hit the coral reefs under there and see what exotic species live around there. Oh yeah, oh yeah, getting hits already. What did I tell you all? What did I tell you all? Oh yeah, boy. We're going to see what is out there. Set the drag a little bit. Hopefully some newer species. Oh boy. We got the Florida Special double up. Oh yeah, all right. There are uh, tons of species out there, all right? We got a double slippery dick, boy. Double Halicoides bivitatus, son. Boy, that's all I needed. We got double dick in the box, man. <laughs> Unbelievable, look at that. One of the most beautiful rods out there, right? But goodness gracious, we don't want these, please. Oh, oh! And these, please. Oh, oh! You know, it is not entirely my fault. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you were slippery like that and you can slither away like a snake But I do feel like I own the slippery dick community an apology here on YouTube, you know, so I Apologize for the mishandle of dicks of slippery dicks uh, In this video and for all my community out there Okay, if you ever come down here to Florida to grab yourself some slippery dicks just uh treat them nicely okay don't don't bang them like like that all right release them nicely okay but yeah there was a new species for this fishing trip though but not exactly the new species i'm looking for i'm gonna enjoy the fact that the tide is just shifting from high to low and cast a few more times man we still got a little bit of time As you guys can see, I got a high-low rig right here with two big pieces of shrimp. I've been trying to catch the pair of fish down there, but if you guys take a look, the current is going pretty strong from the left to the right, right? Meaning that the tide is going down. So it is no longer a viable option for me to cast my stuff out there because I get dragged into the rifts right away. I did catch a few French grunt in between the Hyamulon Flavo Lineatum. I'm just going to wait a little bit until the tide drops a little bit and I'm going to start micro fishing these holes over here. You guys remember those holes, huh? That's where my first ever Antilles frill thing came from, the Batigobius Antilliensis, right? And my first ever Molly Miller as well, this Cartella Cristata. But for now, I'm just going to fool around a little bit more, you know? Oh yeah, ladies and gentlemen, you see, this is exactly the type of thing that I was talking about. I see some tiny ass gold bees or I don't know what type of micros just is swimming in this hole right here. And I am dying to find out because these little fellas usually, mm, they can be new species. Where did that hole go? I went back to put the Tanago on. I got the Tanago with a micro shrimp on, but now I can't find the hole. Where is it? Maybe it is around here. Uh, oh, I see it. It's right over there, boy. Hell yeah, man. I don't know about trophy fishing, but when it comes to micro fishing, when it comes to life, listen, you know? Oh, right there, right there. They call me Eagle Eyes, bro. Wow, I say like it is easy, but it is actually not that easy. <laughs> this is the difficult part, getting to bite, you know? There's a big one all the way on the bottom there. Let's see if I can get it to bite. Something else took it. There's a big one right there. Oh, big one, got it! I got the big one, I got it, I got it. This is the big one, this is the big one. Look at the size of that. That's that's the big one, okay? Oh, it's a little goby, bro. It's a little goby. Do I have this goby yet? Do I not have this goby? We'll find out, boy. You know, folks, these little gobies are notorious 
for being hard to identify. I took shots of it, so I don't know exactly what it is for now. I believe that it may be the Antilles frill thing goby that I caught in the past, the Batigobius Antilliensis, but for now, yeah, I really have no clue. I'm going to release this little guy right over here, all right? There it goes, back you go. Little fella is very, very lively. Right here, the collars. Oh, there was another one that just hopped down there. Look at that. There's a bunch of them around, you know? I'm going to microfish a little bit more in hopes of catching something a little bit different, but I will have to wait until I go back to Philly to hit the books and the research papers to properly identify those. Every time I do this type of stuff over here, it kind of reminds me of the California or the West Coast tide pools, you know? Because, I mean, let's be sincere, right? You just never know what you are going to find among the little rocks and the cracks here and there. That's why I always tell you guys, these little places like this for microfishing is like a trove of a species. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, got him, got another one, don't know what it is, but we'll find out boy, oh this hole is very productive today, what we got here, hmm, same species as the previous one it feels, but as I told you, with these gobies, you just never know, we gotta take some photos, I got to tell you all ladies and gentlemen, even if you are an expert life lister or multi-species angler, there's just absolutely no way, no way that you can properly identify these gobies without the research paper and without the charts in the research papers, right? That shows you the unique characteristics of each goby native here to Florida. Because I'm telling you, man, it's just, it is that tough. So what I've been doing is I've been targeting them around the little holes over here and for every sample that I catch, I've been taking photos, right? Photos are extremely important. Make sure that you guys stay tuned on the Instagram account because when I go back to Philly, the first thing I'm going to do, man, I'm going to hit that research paper and we are going to identify them. Does that mean that I could be potentially catching new species right now? Yeah, kind of, right? But because I am not 100% sure at the moment, let's just leave them as frilfin gobies or Antilles gobings. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's fish the inlet a little bit more and see what else is going to show up. I tell you what, fellas, while I was exploring for the micros in the juicy tiny holes over here, I found the mother load hole right over here. That one right over there. Let me tell y'all, man, this hole goes deep, son. If you guys don't believe it, let me just put my line down there so you guys will understand what I'm talking about, okay? This thing goes down by like four feet. Four feet right here. And I'm sure we're going to catch some stuff out of this juicy hole. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Juicy hole producing. Let's see what we got here. Size 18 hook, little piece of squid. We got ourselves a little dusky denzel fish, huh? The Istegastis adustus. Well, this is certainly not what we're looking for, but I tell you what, it is from holes like this, the deep ones that you usually pull some real good stuff, you know? I've learned in the Northeast, you know, man, when you find a hole like this, man, you start pulling Tautog up there, the Tautoga Onitis, a bunch of Bergal, the Tautogolabros Aspersus. It is my hope, man, that we're going to pull something decent from this tiny, tiny coral reef hole. Yo, I kid you all not. I just put my stuff down there and I had a bite that kind of fell like an eel bite. I kind of hooked the fish and I just felt the full weight of the fish, you know? It was kind of like a catfish type of thing, you know? I think that was an eel and I'm gonna try to catch that sucker. Such 
Sarge Major, huh? Sergeant Major. Oh, what the heck, bro? That was the yield, man. Ah, I hate myself. I had one chance to catch that yield, and I missed it. Ah, man, this struggle is real. The struggle is real. Man, will you look at that? That current right there, fellas, is unforgiving. I can't even cast to the inlet right now without getting snagged every three casts. So, I mean, the micro fishing and the hole punching has been great, right? We landed all those mystery gobies, but this spot right now, doesn't look like it is going to be very productive. So this is what I'm going to do, all right? In hopes of catching something nice, I'm going to walk over here and start moving towards that wall area right around there. I think that over there, the tide is going to be a little bit slower so that we can actually do some multi-species fishing. Oh man, Florida sometimes can be brutal. I gotta give you that. I hate walking on sand and it is like 80 degrees Fahrenheit out here. Boy, all right, you know what? Let's get to that spot ASAP. Oh yeah, this is exactly what I needed. You see this right over here? A little bit of shade. When you come down here to Florida, man, to do some fishing, you can't just think about the multi-species. You got to think about yourself too, you know? I've been putting sunscreen here every two hours, but I'm getting barbecued out here. So we're gonna stay here for a little while. You know, you know what I'm saying? I got three rods with me, man. Lock and load. Let's go. Oh, what is that? That's the one I saw. Get it, boy. Get it. I got him. I got him. What is that? Dude, that's the thing that I saw. Oh, it's a little denzel fish. Oh man, let, let's put it back here. It's a little denzel fish. Ladies and gentlemen, initially when I saw this little guy down there, I really, really thought, you know, it is an exotic species of fish, right? All I saw was a little fleck of blue and yellow. And I even thought maybe it is just a juvenile bluehead, the Thalassoma bifaciatum. But as it turns out, it was a tiny, tiny little diesel fish. And there we have it, huh? Look at that. Ah, it's got the yellow here and the blue. And it just so turns out to be a new species for me. It's species 306, the Bow Gregory. Check that out, huh? Now I have completed, finally, the most common denzel fish down here in Florida, right? From the dusky denzel fish to the cocoa denzel fish, the long fin denzel fish, and finally, to finish the quartet, this little fella right here, right? And this one is actually an adult already, just a little bit over what? Two and a half, three inches? pretty crazy huh for one tiny fish look at that boom went right against the wall caught it right around here man then eagle eyes fellas eagle eyes all right ladies and gentlemen right on time as you guys can see 1 48 p.m boy that bow gregory that new species couldn't really have come at a better time, huh? I tell you what, it is time for lunch. Cause boy, I am hungry. <laughs> that Bo Gregory was not only the 40th species of this Florida trip thus far, but also it was a new species for me, right? The Istegasis Leucostictus. Boy, you can scratch that side quest out down there, Leo. Mark it, boy. Mark it. We've done it all in this video today, huh? And you know what? This is really the moral of the story for this video. I mean, 
when you are a multi-species angler or a live lister, right, you don't necessarily need to come here to the Boca Raton Inlet in Florida. Any body of water, any new body of water, you really just got to go there, man, and do it all, right? Microfishing punching in the middle of the canal, right? Punching rocks on the side. Not to mention, you have to take all the dependent variables into consideration, in this case today, the tide, right? In order to find all the different species of fish so that you can add into the life list. And as you guys saw in this video, that is just really the first step, right? Because as you catch this fish, boy, now you are hopping into the realm of ichthyology and fish identification. You need to hit the books, the research papers. Make sure that you are identifying them all correctly, right? Which is something that I haven't really done yet in this video, right? Like I told you guys, stay tuned on the Instagram because as soon as I go back to Philly, boy, I'm identifying all those little gobies, mystery gobies that I caught in this video today. But this is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, fellas. I hope that the science that I've implemented over here, you know, uh, I hope that you guys learned something from it, okay? Tie lines. I will see you all next time.